Hi, it's Jeff, host of the podcast. Imagine a world where planning your books is as fun as writing them, where plotters plot in heroic harmony and pantsers organize without overwhelm. Here's the thing, that world exists. Plotters and pantsers alike love the visual outlining and story Bible software Plotter, now available both online and as a web app. Named the number one outlining app for productivity by Kindlepreneur, Plotter turns outlining and organizing your books into the creative process it's supposed to Visit plotter.com slash rw today. That's p-l-o-t-t-r dot com slash rw today. And experience the difference yourself. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Jen Braxma, author of the debut novel, Evangeline's Heaven. In addition to writing, Jen also works as a book coach. Writer Allison Levy wrote about Evangeline's Heaven. Jen Braxma's Evangeline is an engaging, complex protagonist who knows her worth but struggles to find her place. Torn between love and truth, Evangeline's story will take you on the journey of a lifetime. Jen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Well, I'm curious if someone listening hasn't yet heard about your novel, Evangeline's Heaven, how would you describe the novel? It's a YA young adult fantasy, and it's about Lucifer's daughter, but in this case, it's about the battle of the heavens before Lucifer's fall. Lucifer is waging war against the other classes of angels, and Evangeline, who has always looked up to her father, starting to realize that perhaps her father's motives aren't quite as pure as she once thought. And so she has to decide whose side she's actually on. And I'm curious, do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to write the novel? So it was much more of a gradual idea. There wasn't one pinprick of a light bulb or one specific event in my life. It was this concept of binary, of good versus evil, so many of the stories that we read are very much, you know, the bad guys, the good guys, the villains, the heroes. And of course, that's great. But I wonder what what would happen if we looked at who is the biggest bad that we could think of? And it's often, you know, considered the devil or Satan, at, at least in a Western Christian mythology culture. So I got to thinking, what if maybe some people didn't think Lucifer was quite that bad? And what would happen when they kind of realized maybe his per their perception of Lucifer... Uh, wasn't exactly the way that everyone else thought. It was just a way to kind of start to go into the complexities of of who we really are. I mean, my characters are angels, but certainly based on humanity anyway. That's great. And I'm curious, what was your initial fiction writing journey that led you to writing and getting your first novel published? Oh, I'm sure like many authors, uh, a long winding path. Uh, I first knew back when I was a kid, eight years old, I decided, yeah, this is it. I'm de this is my career path. I'm definitely going to be an author. I wrote a short story. Uh, it was, it was around Christmas time. It was based about Santa and his reindeer. And I was just so proud of it, uh, that I even got it published. And by that, I mean my mom typed it up for me. It was so cute. Ah, and it's also, I should I should hasten to add, an award winner because my dad put a Woody Woodpecker sticker on it that said, excellent. So award-winning author at age eight. After that winding path, I uh, wrote short stories all through high school, considered going into it in a, in a more focused way in university, but I chose journalism. Um, which, you know, I, I thought at the time maybe, huh, oh, more practical, but, you know, who knew that journalism would take the paths that it did. So weaving and winding, I ended up, I still decided I wanted to focus more on books and stories. So I, I veered into teaching. And so I was a high school English teacher for almost two decades, um, writing short stories on the side. And then a few years back decided, okay, you know what? I'm just going to dive into this whole fiction novel writing. This is what I really wanted to do. 
So I did a bit of a DIY kind of thing, try to figure it out for myself. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't getting too far, um, but I did, I wrote my first manuscript. It was a young adult murder mystery. It was a retelling of Macbeth. I thought it was brilliant. And I actually landed a literary agent. So I'm thinking, wow, great, big time here, you know, big wigs, here I come. And then my agent wasn't able to place it with a publisher. And I, naive, not knowing too much about the publishing industry, like, oh, really? That could happen. I figured, <laughs> hey, agent, published, you know, success. And uh, so it was a really good learning experience about just how, um, you know, how different opinions and, and different tastes and there are in the marketplace. Uh, so I started over again, and that's when I discovered book coaching. I, I hired a book coach who actually showed me, hey, one-on-one -on -one support about how to actually write a full novel. I'd learned a lot about how to write characters. I'd learned a lot about how to write setting. I'd learned a lot about how to put plots together, but really trying to put them all together in my own story. She was invaluable. And uh, working with, with Jenny on my story one-on-one -on -one really helped me see, hey, you know what, maybe I could do this uh, as, a, as my own gig. So um, Jenny Nash, uh, author accelerator, she has a training program for book coaches. So I dove into that, and now I get to work with clients writing their own books at the same time that I also have time to work on my own fiction. That's great. And as you just mentioned about working as a book coach, can you talk to us about the work that you do with authors? Yeah, absolutely. So there are three uh, prongs, if you will, to, to my work as a book coach. One of them is developmental editing, although it's less editing at the end. The idea is that I help my clients. I have that expertise to help them as they're writing. So my clients and what I did with Jenny is submit a, a certain number of pages every couple of weeks, and I get feedback as I go. It really helps to make sure that you don't go down the garden path before the end of the manuscript. And I know from personal experience that happened to me before I worked with a book coach. I wrote another novel, 300 pages in, I'm done, this is great. And then I realized as I'm finishing the last few pages, as I'm getting to the climax, that the beginning of my story made no sense whatsoever. And I thought, I have just wasted my time on these 300 pages. It was, it was not salvageable, not at all. Like not even edits would work with this. Uh, so yeah, so uh, developmental editing and some technique skills, that's one piece. The other piece is accountability. So I give deadlines to my clients. And when I work with my own book coach, I have deadlines and I need that. Life gets in the way. You want to make your writing a priority. Not everyone can. So this is a way to kind of, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm looking for your pages. So that really helped me. My background, as I said, was in journalism. So I work to deadlines. Somebody who doesn't give me a deadline, it probably won't get done. Tell me when I need to have it done and I will. And then the last piece, which is actually really the most important part for me, both as a writer and what I hope I can give to my clients, is emotional support. We all know that it's it's hard to write a book. And it's really helpful to know somebody who, A, has gone through it, and B, can walk you through it when you're frustrated, when you're, you're sitting there with that blank page and you're like, I don't know what to do next. Or you've managed to get your character into a crazy situation and you have no idea how you're going to get that character out of said situation. You know, you email and you call your book coach and you say, what do I do now? Uh, so it's really, it's really just a way to say, hey, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm here with you. I'm in your corner. I got your back on this. So that, that empathy piece, that emotional support is one of the biggest benefits that I got as a, as a book coach or at working with my book coach and that I hope I'm able to give my clients too. And so if a writer is listening to this and is interested in learning more about your book coaching, what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, you can just check out my website, jenbraxma.com. There's an email there. You can uh, email me anytime. We'll set up a, a phone call to chat about your writing goals, your writing projects, and see how I might be able to help. I certainly have some uh, services listed on my website, but I also customize for individual writers. So I listen to what you need and see how I might be able to best help you. And then we come up with a, a plan, a proposal that might work for each individual writer. And so I'm curious about your own writing process as you were working on Evangeline's Heaven. Did you outline the novel extensively before you began, or did you just kind of have the kind of basic idea and dive into the narrative? How did that work for you? 
Yeah, that is an excellent question because I used to be a pantser, like that story, that 300-page monstrosity mm -hmm. that will never see the light of day. And I thought that that was the only way to do it because I hated outlining. It just seemed to suck out all the joy of writing. And I realized only later that the reason why I felt it sucked out all of the joy was because I really had no idea what I was doing. So I was just avoiding the hard parts of, say, plot by simply, oh, I'll just deal with that later. So when I met Jenny, my book coach, and she introduced me to what she calls the inside outline, and I've adapted it for my own, uh, for my own clients too. And it is, it is, it was revolutionary for me. It was game changing for me because in only a few pages. So yes, I now do outline, but it's only a couple of pages. It's not an extensive outline. But what was different about this? So my whole story is just in a few pages where I write just a sentence or two summary of what's happening in the scene. But it's not just here's what happens and then this and then this. It's why each scene matters to the protagonist. We know that stories have uh, a story arc, like what's happening in the story from beginning to end. And we also know that there's a character arc, that the protagonist evolves and changes in some way. And that's often, uh, you know, much more subtle. It's, it's an important part of the story, but it's not right there in your face as the reader. So it's harder as a writer to remember to, to include those pieces. So this outline, you write one sentence about what's going on, you write one sentence about why that scene matters. In two to three pages, you have your whole story there, both the, the plot story arc as well as the character arc. And once Jenny introduced me to that, once I figured out how to do that, that's the kind of outline that I work with. You can expand it, it's a working document. I didn't have to stick to it when I first started. Here's my outline. But hey, maybe I want to change it and go off here. It's a roadmap. That's all it is. And if I wanted to go off in a different direction, at least I had a map to remind myself I was going off in a different direction. Uh, and it was really hard to learn those outline skills at first. I was resistant, uh, but it turned out to be the best thing for my storytelling because when I did sit down at the computer, started typing away, I felt like, oh, I actually know what I'm writing as I work through it. So... It was, it was the best uh, process for me. Meet the One for All card. Perfect for Aunt Edith, your dog walker, and even what's his name. With over 100 great brands and no fees, it's the one gift for all. Available in stores and at giftcards.com. It's finally here. The Macy's Friends and Family Sale with an extra 30% off gifts they'll love. Get an extra 25% off dressed up designer looks for kids from Calvin Klein and more. Plus an extra 25% off Samsonite and Delsey luggage. With great prices from top designers, Macy's has all the best deals you won't want to miss this week. And don't forget to sign up for a Macy's card or use a coupon to get 15% off beauty products they'll love this season. Visit Macy's.com to find great holiday deals today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Change your vehicle's oil before your summer road trip and save money now with Pennzoil and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Right now, get five quarts of Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic for just $22.95 after mail-in rebate. Save money and protect your engine against sludge and wear with the synthetic oil change. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today or OReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. And I'm curious, are you writing another novel yourself now? I have just finished an adult literary fantasy. It's called The Fairy Tale Fringe Festival. And it's focusing on a human storyteller, Fauna, and a Greek goddess, Muse, Calliope, who end up coming together on this magic island in order to fight back against the patriarchy and their stolen fairy tales. So I'm just finishing up that manuscript now and getting ready to uh, choose the right publishing path for, for me. And uh, be as soon as I finish that up, I'm diving straight into the sequel to Evangeline's Heaven. I'm excited to get back to her world and dive deeper into Evangeline's Heavens. That's great. I'm curious, what writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories or novels? Uh, patience and empathy for yourself. 
We often uh, think that when we love to read, I mean, most of us, if you're a writer, it's probably because you also love to read. You pick up a book and you can fly through it. If it's really good, you know, you're up all night like, oh, wow, this is fantastic. But you forget that it took the, the author a long time. Or it could have, you know, not everyone just can just whip out a book and that's the end of it. So it takes time. It takes research. It takes uh, revision after revision. It takes a lot of effort. So it's okay if you don't get it right. It's okay if you don't get it right right away. It's okay if it takes you a long time, especially because we all do have other things going on in our lives. So just, you know, give yourself a break. And know that you are not alone out there. Even if you choose not to work with a book coach, if you have a friend who's just like, hey, how, you know, how's your story going? It's just knowing that what you're doing is important, even if it takes you a while. So yeah, just give yourself a break. That's the, that's the best advice that I could give to any writer. That's great. Well, what books or novels have you read recently that you enjoyed? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a great novel that I'm, I've just started. I haven't, uh, I haven't even gotten, um, all the way through it yet. It's called The Centaur's Wife by Amanda LeDuc and, uh, also includes some of her own original fairy tales. Uh, I love fantasy books. Obviously, there's, there's a reason why I wrote fantasy as well. Um, um, but I also love, well, I kind of I kind of bounce around in genres too, you know, some some good mystery books as well. Um, Tammy Hogue's Ninth Girl. It's an older um, mystery series. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of eclectic. I don't um, I don't know that I have you know a whole list of oh my gosh I have to reread this or do this. Right. I think my all time one of my all time favorite books, however, is Aaron Morgenstern's The Night Circus. So it's a it's a little bit older too, but I, again, it's just it's a it's a beautiful fantasy and love story. I'm romance. I'm I'm all about uh, um, you know characters coming together like that. So That's so great. yeah, those are some some books that I really love to read. Well, where can people find you online if they le- if they would like to learn more about you and your novel and your book coaching? Yeah, I have uh, jenbraxmawriter dot com is my writer website jenbraxman.com is my coaching website. You can get back and forth from one to the other on either. So it doesn't really matter uh, which one you find me at. Um, but it's it's from there, you know, send me an email, get in touch. Absolutely. My social media links are also on those uh, email uh, or sorry, on those web pages as well. And uh, yeah, I love connecting with readers and other writers. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear from from anyone who'd, who'd love to get in touch. That's great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Jen Braxma, author of the novel Evangeline's Heaven. The novel is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And Jen, thanks for doing this interview. Thanks so much. It was so nice talking to you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. In this excerpt from Evangeline's Heaven, Lucifer is about to leave on a quest, leaving his 18-year-old daughter Evangeline in charge of their people, the commoner angels. When Lucifer takes flight, Evangeline yearns to grab onto his foot, tug him back to the ground and tell him to stay. Yes, she wants him to find the key, the key, but she needs him here. Despite her father's confidence in her, she is well aware of her limitations, that she can't lead or inspire. And if he must go, she wishes he'd put Zephon in charge of this campaign. He's a seasoned soldier after all, the best after her father. But he's not Lucifer. And the people want Lucifer, which means only she, his daughter, comes the closest. She sighs. She has no interest in organizing the rally. She hates the idea of speaking in public. And she worries about exposing the commoners to danger out in the open fields of Seog Glen. She'll have to talk to Zephon about security. But more than anything, she's fearful of disappointing her father. It's happened rarely since Evangeline strives to comply with her father's wishes as she flushes at the heat of shame as she vividly remembers when she has. And that was for minor infractions, like not returning home for dinner in time or faring poorly in a training exercise. She can't bear to consider Lucifer's deep glare of displeasure if she were to turn her back on him now at this most fragile time for the cause, which means she'll do as he asks. She watches her father fly along the rocky coastline, sharp with rugged beauty, as he rises higher into the clouds. Without warning, 
Four figures shoot up from the cliff's edge and surround her father. Evangeline sees the silhouette of their swords, recognizes the distinctive white of Gabriel's wings among the attackers, and her heart stops. No, she cries, but the wind and the surf eat up the sound. She unsheathes her sword and leaps into the air. The archangels encircle her father. She hears the quick staccato clang of metal on metal as Lucifer deftly, skillfully fights them off. She sees one of them spiral backward through the air and plummet to the ground with an agonizing scream. The other three close in on Lucifer, their attention so focused on Lucifer's dizzying blade that they don't see Evangeline when she dives into the fray, stabbing one of them in the back above the wings. She hears the crunch of bone and her stomach convulses as she pulls out her sword. For all her skill at sword fighting, she's never had to use it in battle, never had to actually injure someone. It makes her sick. The second archangel spins out of control toward the rocks below. Evangeline, go, Lucifer bellows at her. But shaky or not, Evangeline won't leave her father, not when he's fighting Gabriel and... The third archangel turns to face her, Michael. Evangeline hesitates a moment too long at seeing her one-time friend, the only friend she made at school, although she knew he was kind to her only because his father Gabriel had made him be. Michael thrusts his sword at her, cutting into her shoulder. She cries out at the pain then bites her tongue. The wound burns hot. She feels blood seep onto her skin, but it's not deep. With effort, she refocuses as Michael jabs again. Evangeline parries and attacks. She looks into his silver gray eyes. She sees recognition and she can't think. She blocks his cross swipe and with a swift flick of her wrist, she twists his sword away from her. She's desperate to know how her father is doing against Gabriel. They are well matched. The master Gabriel having trained his then protege exceedingly well. But Gabriel is older, and Lucifer fights with a passion unequaled in all the heavens. So Evangeline is hopeful, but still, she can't afford to look. Michael abruptly flies to her left, but Evangeline immediately spins to meet his blade. The wind picks up, pushing them past the cliff's edge, out over the rocks, frothing with waves. She hears her father's roar. No! With a gut-wrenching fear, her head snaps toward him as he wrings the tips of Gabriel's snowy wings. Gabriel drops in the air, but he's able to control his descent, injured, as Lucifer launches upward. Michael! Gabriel cries. Michael rockets after Lucifer, but Evangeline hurls herself at him. She grabs a handful of silver feathers and yanks him back with all her might. They grapple in the air as Michael tries to shake her off, but Evangeline's weight drags them both down. Out of control, they both spiral down, down, down. Michael tries to kick at her, and Evangeline's grip slips, but she holds on. She has to. She has to make sure her father gets away. They plummet toward the churning ocean. If Evangeline doesn't let go now, they will crash into the shallow water together, landing on jagged rocks. Evangeline calculates. The spray of the water drenches their wings. Another second. But Evangeline jumps away from Michael too late, and the ocean swallows them up. Like a spear, she shoots down through the water. She hits the rocks. The pain is a thousand knife slices. And she rolls and spins, first her shoulder, then her head cracked against rocks. She feels dizzy, nauseous, disoriented. She spins around and around, unable to find the surface. She feels the current drag her away. Her lungs are bursting. She must breathe. Opening her mouth, she tastes the salt, but keeps her throat closed. Air, she needs air. She slows in the water, and then she sees a pinprick of light. With the last of her effort, she kicks toward it and bursts above the surface, gasping for breath. Her eyes dim with spots. Her head aches. But Evangeline works to orient herself. She sees the ocean has washed her down shore. Where she and Michael crashed into the water, she notices Gabriel pulling Michael from the waves. Michael is crawling, moving, alive. Evangeline scans the skies. The clouds have dissipated, swept away by the strengthening wind, leaving behind a sky of intense, clear blue. Her father is fast. Evangeline is convinced he escaped. Weary, aching, Evangeline drags herself toward the beach. She stays low in the water, afraid Gabriel and Michael will spot her. Her wings drenched and heavy, she wants to collapse onto the rocks, but instead she creeps toward a narrow cave in the cliff, an underground trench. She needs to rest, and she needs to wait them out. She pulls herself into the mouth of the cavern, crumpling against the cold stone wall. She trembles, soaked and scared and racked with guilt. Good.
Call it Duty Modern Warfare is here, and so is Mountain Dew. Roger that. Now you can unlock in-game rewards like only Dew can. Wait, what rewards? A Dew Operator Skin. Man, I love Operator Skins. Dual double XP, and even Call of Duty points. You're kidding me. Double XP and Call of Duty points? This is incredible. I can't believe it. This... Soldier, get a hold of yourself. Oh, roger that. Look for specially marked packaging and visit mtndugaming.com for details and restrictions. Open to U.S. residents 17 plus. Call of Duty points available on 12 and 24 packs and free 20 and 23. It's finally here. The Macy's Friends and Family Sale with an extra 30% off gifts they'll love. Get an extra 25% off dressed up designer looks for kids from Calvin Klein and more. Plus an extra 25% off Samsonite and Delsey luggage. With great prices from top designers, Macy's has all the best deals you won't want to miss this week. And don't forget to sign up for a Macy's card or use a coupon to get 15% off beauty products they'll love this season. Visit Macy's.com to find great holiday deals today.